Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be the Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile video, and this time it is going to be an updated Crusadia Guard Dragon deck profile for March 2019. Now, this is post-YCS Atlanta weekend. I did play at YCS Atlanta, it being my hometown, but this is not the list that I played in the event. That list had a lot of theory thrown into it that worked well in testing, but did not work well in practice of the event. That list was pretty bad in retrospect. Uh, it played things like Rescue Cat, which are absolutely terrible. Uh, and all these other cards that I basically like convinced myself were good through limited testing and then just in practical senses they were garbage. So this is the list that I put together like after the event, after our team was eliminated um, and started playtesting it with a lot of my friends, playtesting the relevant matchups and stuff like that and like it's been performing super well. Uh, so this is the list that uh, I sort of wish that I'd played at YCS Atlanta, truth be told. But uh, basically that is what I'm going to show you today is that this updated deck list. Now I don't know how much this deck is going to change when Dual Power comes out, but that comes out like April 15th or something, like about a month away. Uh, so until then there's regionals and stuff that I plan on entering with this deck until I ultimately get tired of it. But uh, if you like videos like this, then definitely make sure to subscribe if you're new here and want to see more stuff. Check out the channel and all that sort of nonsense. Leave a like if you enjoy the content and leave your thoughts and suggestions in the comments down below or if you have any questions or what have you. But with that out of the way, let's get into the deck profile. Now, monster lineup, uh, three Crusadia Draco. It's like the most important one because it's what makes this deck work. Uh, three copies of Crusadia Maximus, which actually gets used a lot when you're going second because this is still a Crusadia deck. If you're going second, you can punch for big numbers with Maximus. Three copies of Crusadia Arborea. Uh, this one's actually super good because of the fact that like a lot of people were playing Ghost Ogre uh, this weekend in Atlanta, and uh, like they try to Ghost Ogre your Spatha, and like this just operates like Baylinx, uh, so you can just banish it from your graveyard and protect your Spathas or your Magius from getting Ghost Ogred. Uh, three copies of Crusadia Leonis. Uh, even though I'm not playing Cat in this build because Rescue Cat sucks, as I previously said, uh, it's still a Crusadia name. You want to maximize on those. And then three copies of Crusadia Reclusia, which is honestly my favorite Crusadia. Uh, this one is my favorite because going second against either Sky Striker or against like uh, Salaman Grape, you're able to just special summon this for free. And specifically in the Salaman Grape uh, situation, you usually know where their roar is if they've, uh, if they've done their play correctly. And so you special uh, Reclusia in front of their wolf and then just pop their roar uh, and then proceed with your play. So, like, that's really nice. But the 15 Crusadias, uh, you shouldn't be playing any less than all 15 because you need the cards to start your combos moving. Uh, but no Rescue Cats because, like I said, that card is terrible. And I'll elaborate more in a bit. Uh, but three copies of Black Dragon Clap Serpent and one copy of White Dragon Wyver Burster. I honestly wish that I could play more of this card. I really like this card. I want to play at least two of it. Uh, but this list is already 41 as it stands, and there are other cards that I want to play more of as well. Uh, but this, these cards are like your best extenders if you draw them. Uh, in a previous list, I was playing three and three because they are just amazing. Uh, but I definitely want to try and up this to two, but I don't want to be going too high over 40 uh, cards. And like I said, the deck list is already at 41. Uh, <laughs> and so it's, it's pretty hard to justify what I want to keep and what I don't want to keep. But uh, one copy of Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon. Uh, this card is just way too good. Honestly, this is the reason we are playing it. Uh, but then one copy of uh, Magna Rocket uh, Dragon, or yeah, Magna Rocket Dragon. Uh, it doesn't really matter, it's just a rocket name to summon off quick launch because I am playing that package. It being a level 4 is kind of cool, um, and like, its effect can come up if you're playing, because I'm playing Boreload, like the effect to target it and send a card, but it's, it's never used for that. It's literally just for an extender. Um, you could play two rockets for the quick launch package if you want, but I've never found myself needing more than one. Uh, and like, this one being a level 4, it just... It just makes sense because, like, you could do things with that being a level 4. Uh, but two copies of Destrudo. Uh, I thought this card was terrible. Uh, and then I started testing with it. Uh, and it just turns out that in the applications of what I thought people were using it for, it is terrible. Like, just using it so you can make a, a Dawn Dragster or a Borload Savage at the end of your combo sequence. And that's what I thought people were using it for. That application is terrible. The application that it's good for is for being an extender into your combo sequences. Like, you're able to just put this on the board, uh, it basically lowers its level to always be level 4 or lower, and you're able to then make, like, Pisty and LP with it. So, like, it's a good extender in that regard. Uh, so, like, I could possibly justify playing 3 of it, uh, but honestly, it's just fine. Also, uh, when you draw Red Med and you summon this off LP, uh, and then banish LP for Red Med and have a Distrudo in circulation, it is just a casual plus 1. Uh, and that's like really good as well because it sort of makes it to where your combo cannot not fully resolve at that point because like sometimes you make Saryuja trying to draw an extender because you don't have the proper extender but if you open with Red Med and you get this out of your deck all of a sudden this becomes that extender in Grave after you link away with it so it becomes really good but so 
those were all the dragons. Uh, I'm playing two copies of Gamma Seal, the Sea Turtle Kaiju, and then two copies of Ash Blossom and Joy of Spring as the last monsters. Uh, I didn't want to not have Ash in my deck, uh, even though like hand traps are kind of kind of weird for this deck because typically like you can just play a lot of Kaiju's and Kaiju over there like Gagari, uh, Shizuku, or whatever that they leave on the board in Sky Striker, or you can Kaiju over their Sunlight Wolf and turn off their Roar or whatever Link monster they have. Because uh, they usually only end on one Salmon Great Link monster, and you're just able to turn off their roar that way, or turn off their ra make their rage like really bad. Uh, turns it from two free pops into a Raigeki break that's a minus one usually, uh, because they have to discard like their Gazelle or whatever to make that live. Um, and then like the Kaiju's, you know, obviously fuel your Echo Max going second. But I just had to play Ash Blossom because I was very scared of Artifact Sanctum. Uh, that's the reason why I played this card, and also like. Uh, if you're not drawing into Waterfront off of your Saryuja play to get to the Gamma Seal and put it on board, you're usually drawing into cards like Call by the Grave and other stuff as well, and like being able to draw into this card and have it turn one in place of a Gamma Seal on top of your board that has three to four negates on it, plus possible Call by the Graves, uh, like, that's, that's, you know, it's pretty decent. Like, instead of playing, like, extra copies of Waterfront, like, these cards just, like, are all around, like, more versatile and better. Uh, but yeah, like, I just didn't want to lose to Artifact Sanctum. <laughs> That's really the main reason I played the Ash Blossoms. Could not take the loss to Sanctum with a straight face, but that is all the monsters. Uh, I believe it's 27, if I remember correctly, it's 26 or 27. Um, spells, three copies of Waterfront, the two, uh, two Waterfront and the one Terraforming. Um, I want to play four of it, but like, it just, it's too much if you play four of it, because you just start like drawing multiples and like bricking on it. Um, if I was only playing, like, one copy of Gamma Seal on the main deck, so I was taking a brick out of the deck, I'd play more Waterfronts. Or, like, if I wasn't playing the Quick Launch Package, again, taking a brick out of the deck in the form of Ra Magna Rocket Dragon, uh, I'd play more Waterfronts. But, like, those cards help facilitate plays, uh, whereas this is just something you're trying to get to uh, some of the times. Most of the times, but some of the times. But, again, I've said this theory many times in the past, but the reason I'm not just playing three Waterfronts is because if you draw Terraforming and you're able to Terraform it for Waterfront, that means that two copies of a card are out of your deck, meaning that your Saryujas are better later uh, because you're able to just, like, uh, not draw into multiple cards of Waterfront, copies of Waterfront that are left in your deck. Uh, whereas if, like, this was Waterfront and you drew it, there's still two copies of Waterfront left in your deck, meaning your Saryuja could be drawing into multiples. And most of the time you want your Saryuja to be seeing as many different cards from what you have as possible. So that is the reasoning there. But... Carrying on one copy of Reinforcement of the Army. This is just another Crusadia name. This gets this gets Arborea. Um, playing this card because I'm not playing Cat. Because, like, uh, I'll explain. I'll explain later why I'm not playing Cat. Because Cat sucks. <laughs> Cat's absolutely terrible. I played it at the YCS, and it literally never resolved. Cat is awful. But anyway, uh, three copies of Quick Launch. This is essentially another Crusadia name, but also just another dragon. Uh, this is really cool because you can open a Crusadia plus Quick Launch, and that's full combo. Uh, to go into your first Saryuja and get the Red Med out of your deck. So, like, that's really nice. This is essentially a starter and an extender, which is a fantastic card. Um, if you played more Rockets, you could use more of them in a turn because it's not a hard once per turn. But, again, I just don't feel like it's uh, nece uh, necessarily, like, uh, advantageous to be playing uh, two copies of a Brick uh, specifically to make this card not once per turn. But, I mean, it could, see, it could be something that you mess around with. I mean, honestly, because... If you resolve multiples of these, it's probably really good. But you really only have to resolve one realistically. But it's really good. So uh, it was an engine I was definitely sleeping on in the past. But tested it and it turned out to be actually pretty good for what it needed to be. And again, like I said, it's another Crusadian name. Because this is a starter card. Getting your rocket special summon under Magius to then search for a card. Um, and honestly, unironically, an application that this, uh, this card is good for as well. Is playing around your opponent having DD Crow. Because, like, a lot of times, if you are if you get to the point where you summon Red Med and then use Red Med's effect, uh, and they uh, DD Crow your Crusadia Draco, uh, that kind of sucks, because then, like, there's no other dragon for you to revive off of Red Med. Uh, whereas, Quick Launch, it summons a dragon from your deck and puts it in the grave, so that's another card for Red Med to access. Uh, so that's really cool. But anyway, uh, moving on, the three Reborn spells, two Succession and one Monster Reborn. World Legacy Guard Dragon kind of sucks, in my opinion. I really don't like the card. Uh, I feel like the deck has enough extenders as it is, and if I was going to play a card like Crusadia Guard Dragon that only interacts with one card in my deck usually, which is um, Crusadia Draco, I would just play like a second copy of Wyver Burster or a second copy of uh, a Rocket to summon a Quick Launch to make those cards better, rather than just playing a card like World Legacy Guard Dragon, because the move effect very rarely comes up if you're playing correctly. 
uh, and, like, the the effect to just revive a dragon, like, you could just be playing other cards that also just do that, but anyway, three copies of Called by the Grave, uh, this card is self-exclamatory, you don't want to lose two hand traps, um, and, like, sometimes you just hit scythes that are being popped by rage and coming back from a grave with this card, uh, so that's also really nice, uh, but so that was all the spells, uh, should be 14, and then the one trap in the deck is Crusadia Crawler. Um, I feel like Equimax is the strongest negate that this board, uh, that this deck puts out, uh, next only to Gamma Seal. Uh, like Hot Red Dragon Abyss, uh, or Crystal Wing, whichever one you're playing, uh, is, like, cool, but Equimax accessing this card, um, and summoning this under the Equimax and then searching World Legacy Succession is really good, especially since Equimax can be protected by Arborea, uh, which means that that's essentially the same thing that Salamangrate is doing. Salamangrate boards are ending on Roar or Rage, plus Baylinx Engrave to protect the uh, the cards they have on field. Whereas if you're ending on Equimax plus this, and you have uh, an Arborea Engrave that you use to make that entire play happen, uh, then you basically have the exact same like principles behind what makes a Salamangrate board good. You have a Negate in the form of Equimax, you have a Protection from Destruction in the form of Arborea, and then uh, like this just casually searched a uh, Monster Reborn card, which is going to be useful on your next turn for playing into whatever they try to do. So, like, fundamental principles, it's, like, really cool, but I just wish this card wasn't as heavy of a brick as it is. But, unfortunate. But anyway, uh, into the extra deck. We have one copy of Crusadia Magius, two copies of Magius, actually, uh, one copy of Spatha, one copy of Regulix, and one copy of Equimax. Now, the two Magius actually just does come up a lot, even without Cat, uh, because, like, uh, it comes up in instances of, like, you drawing Waterfront off your second Saryuja, uh, you want to be able to special a Crusadia from your hand and then just make it into a Magius and then make that Crusadia plus another card into something like Regulix. That immediately gets three counters on Waterfront, which lets you search and special with Saryuja before you link it away uh, into uh, Equimax. So that's really key. Uh, but other than that, we have the Guard Dragon package of LP, Pisty, and Agrapane. Uh, a second Pisty comes up quite a lot, but I just am not playing it because... Uh, if I was not playing Crusadia Crawler and, like, the other stuff that allows me to get for uh, World Legacy Succession for the next turn, I'd probably be playing a second Pisty in my extra deck. Um, specifically because, like, you can end your turn with a white or black dragon in your hand almost all the time. Uh, and then, like, Pisty could just be made next turn to revive Red Med and then keep going. But since you usually have access to Crawler, uh, Crawler searches Succession, which Succession can revive this, and then this revives Red Med... Um, or any order you want to do that in. Uh, you can revive Red Med, revive this, and then this revives the Saryuja. There's a lot of different ways for you to make Succession turn into, like, three monsters, and that's really nice. But, carrying on, uh, I decided to play two cards in my extra deck uh, just for utility. Uh, Nightmare Phoenix and Nightmare Cerberus. These come up a bit, a bit when you're comboing as well. Uh, specifically, like, in grind games as well, because, like, the fact that they are cards that have sideways pointing arrows uh, in your extra deck, that's actually pretty key. Uh, but, like, these cards do just, uh, come up quite a bit, uh, specifically, uh, in combos where, again, you're drawing Waterfront off your last Saryuja, because you end up making Saryuja up top, you make Regulix underneath the Saryuja to get your Waterfront to three counters, you search Gamma Seal and Special it, and then you make either Cerberus or Phoenix with a Monster plus Saryuja on top of the Regulix, and that triggers Regulix to search for your, uh, Crusadia Crawler. Um, so, like, that's why they come up in combos, but then they come up in just, like, good natural game states anyway. Uh, but then, continuing on, two copies of Sir Yuja Skull Dread. Uh, this card is kind of necessary to... I kind of want to play three of it, uh, truth be told. Um, if I was going to cut, like, Nightmare uh, Cerberus for anything, because it's, like, the underperformer, Nightmare Phoenix performed more, um, it would definitely be for a third copy of Sir Yuja. Uh, Boral Load Dragon. Uh, I play this instead of Boral Sword, because Equimax is usually game by itself anyway, so we don't really need Boral Sword. Um, if anything, Equimax is better in mo almost all the applications. Uh, then Boral Sword, because Equimax does, like, 12,000 by himself, usually. Uh, but, like, Boral Load coming up, uh, Boral Load comes up a lot. Uh, and then the two Synchros are Dawn Dragster and Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon. So Boral Load and Crystal Wing are my two targets for Agrapan. Realistically, this is the only target for Agrapan. Uh, I'm not playing Barkeon in the deck anymore, because in my eyes, any trap deck I would play against is going to trap me before I get to the Barkeon phase. And doing Barkeon turn one is just, like, I could be, like, just drawing Gamma Seal and winning that game, so... Doesn't really matter. It loses all the same things, but I just decided to play the extra card in the extra deck. God, I am tired. But anyway, so that is the full deck list. Uh, side deck is just really generic stuff like Twin Twisters, Reboots, and stuff like that. Uh, but so why Rescue Cat sucks? <laughs> Rescue Cat 
Uh, in a vacuum is great. In a vacuum, card is fantastic. It summons two Leonises from your deck, and you do a combo with it, and like it's fantastic. But the problem here is that Yu-Gi-Oh is not played in a vacuum. Yu-Gi-Oh has to take into account other outside influences and other outside factors. And for some, I had this thought process when I originally started playing this deck, but then I let someone convince me to try Rescue Cat, and then it just never got taken out of my deck. Because I was doing all this testing online in like the mid-tier rating on Dueling Book, where people aren't playing optimally. And like, it just convinced me that the card was insane. Because on Dueling Book, the card almost always resolves. At a YCS, it does not always resolve. At a YCS, what you find happened uh, what you'll find will happen is that your rescue cat will resolve, if you're lucky, maybe 50% of the time. Now, my theory behind uh, playing cat was that rescue cat loses to all the same things that your full combo loses to. Uh, Valor, Impermanence, Ash Blossom. If you're getting hit with one of those cards uh, at all, it's going to be hit on your rescue cat or when you're mid-combo, and you're just going to lose to it either way. That was my thought process. Uh, but that is... Not the case. <laughs> if your rescue cat gets Valored, Impermanence, or Ash Blossomed, your turn is over. You have nothing to build upon. You literally just have to pass turn and just pray to God your opponent is not playing any real deck and passes back to you so you have another shot. Whereas if you open a double Crusadia combo or a Crusadia plus special summon combo, which even without cat in the deck, that is still a 90.8% chance of opening one of the 16 Crusadias, the 15 and the Rota, plus any of the other 22 cards in the deck that say special summon a card, not even factoring in Black Dragon Collapse Serpent um, into that, like not even factoring that in, you still have a 90.8% chance in this 41 card deck to see that, see that combo. Um, when you perform that combo, it's a two card combo, and at the point that you're going to get Impermanence, Valored, or Ash Blossomed, you have Spatha and LP on the field. And at that point, if you have an extender, you still get to play. Whereas if you have an extender and your rescue cat gets hit, you literally do nothing. Uh, so, like, that's, that's the biggest problem. Like, rescue cat is fantastically bad. <laughs> it's a card that is such a high-risk, high-reward card, but the risk far outweighs the reward. Um, and that had to be beaten into me during uh, YCS Atlanta. Like, I literally, my cats resolved 40% of the time. The 40% of the time that it resolved, oh, it was great. It was an auto win. But I literally lost every single game that cat got stopped. And that is no bueno. <laughs> but anyway, with that explanation out of the way, that is the entirety of this deck profile. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. If you have any questions that I didn't address or comments or concerns or whatever, leave them in the comments down below as always. And like I said earlier, if you're new here and want to see more content from this channel, definitely check out the channel. Maybe hit the subscribe button. Maybe enable notifications if you want to not miss an upload. I'd love to welcome you on board. But other than that, like the video if you want to see more like content from this deck in particular. I do really like this deck. I describe this deck to people as a Dragoonity Burning Abyss deck. <laughs> because of the way that it functions and just going in through all these dragon combos but then every card just says special summon on it uh so like i really like this deck i don't know how much longer i can justify playing it before just moving on to better options but it's definitely the deck that i think has the highest ceiling in the format without shelling out the money for danger cards so like i really like it for that aspect but with all that said as i may have said before thanks for watching again thanks for your time as usual and take care guys i'll see you in the next video